You're probably aware of the epidemic of type 2 or adult onset diabetes. We hear a lot about the consequences from heart disease through to blindness, but there's another epidemic that Melbourne researchers have identified that goes hand in hand with type 2 diabetes. It's chronic obstructive sleep apnea and its consequences can be just as dire. I had a high blood sugar and um, I went on a reasonably good diet and lost a lot of weight and I've stayed on insulin oh, for about um, five years now, I think I've been on insulin. Mick has snored, I think, for almost as long as we have been married. And it got to the point where I sometimes had to go into the other room. And sometimes I was weeping because, unfortunately, I'm a light sleeper. So it was impossible to sleep through the snoring. And I did worry because I recognised the episodes where he would gasp. It was really an insupportable situation and I would say that went on for a good 10 years before we actually moved towards a diagnosis. People with sleep apnea have a 40% increased risk of being overweight, 40% increase of getting type 2 diabetes, a 70% increased risk of having high blood pressure and they have a one and a half greater risk of heart attack. It was constantly a push in the ribs and a turn over, which became, I regret to say, more and more angry as the night went on. I sort of felt the jab and I did hear her say turn over and I would mumble something back and turn over. I was very, very obedient <laughs> like that. Well, that was the only way our marriage survived, I suspect. <laughs> Snoring does need to be investigated and usually the first person to complain about it is the partner of the people who's, who's snoring during their sleep. Oh, it was horrible because it was so loud, you know, it used to shake the bed. It was really loud. My wife complains all the time. I dig him in the ribs to turn him over. <laughs> I read if you whistle, it would stop, and it did, but then it would start up again. Sometimes she says she can't sleep all night. I think as long as I cooperate and turn over, she's all right, yes. <laughs> Tells me to roll over, <laughs> pushes me around a bit. Well, the big picture with snoring is that it, it, it is a big picture and it goes from a simple situation, uh, for example, of nasal obstruction with a cold, which may result in snoring, but then there's a much more uh, medical and pathological framework and snoring can be the first symptom of obstructive sleep apnea. When I came back to see the uh, respiratory man afterwards, he looked at me and he said, well, according to this, you're having uh, 40 episodes an hour, and that is classified as serious. The muscles in the airway become relaxed and the actual airway can collapse. That results in a person stopping breathing. This may occur on several occasions during the night. So you don't argue in those situations and um, we discuss the, what we might do, the various forms of treatment and we agreed that a, uh, a CPAP machine would be the most appropriate and I got one pretty quickly and I've been using it ever since. There are a number of treatments for sleep apnea and certainly lifestyle measures first, trying to get someone who is overweight to lose weight could substantially improve uh, the pattern of sleep and, and reduce the episodes of sleep apnea. Failing that, there are other mechanisms, there are dental devices that are recommended, but the most uh, important treatment that we believe at the moment uh, is CPAP. CPAP, or Continuous Positive Airway Pressure, uses a mask that fits over the nose or the nose and the mouth, connected to a tube and a motor that put pressure on the airways to stay open when you're asleep. CPAP is usually only prescribed after a proper sleep test with a specialist. Many people with uh, sleep apnea are, are depressed. So, for example, not only are they performing poorly at work, 
but they are generally depressed, they're at risk of other medical conditions, and there are multiple stories of, of people, their lives being reversed by the treatment with CPAP, and reducing the medications they have for conditions such as diabetes and high blood pressure and heart failure. As you've heard, there are lots of conditions associated with sleep apnea. The big question is, does the sleep apnea cause the heart disease or diabetes, or do those conditions cause the sleep apnea? And if you treat one, does that in fact help the other? It's a very good question as to whether fixing one will fix the other. Certainly we know that in a person with type 2 diabetes who has sleep apnea, the poor control of their blood sugar, despite intensive medical therapy, may be a result of the sleep apnea. Treatment with the CPAP can result in better metabolic control of the diabetes, but the converse is whether treating diabetes improves the CPAP uh, it certainly isn't the case unless the person with type 2 diabetes is overweight and they lose a lot of weight. People thought that the association between type 2 diabetes and sleep apnea was due to many people with diabetes being obese, but we see sleep apnea even in slim people. Certainly people who are overweight will have a thicker neck, for example, and this may have an impact on, on the airway. Someone with heart failure during the night when they're lying down, fluid can accumulate around the neck, making the airway narrower. But for example, with type 2 diabetes, while we know there is a very good association with sleep apnea, we're still not exactly sure of the mechanism. It's really wonderful to be able to sleep without having someone snoring really badly next to you. It makes, even if you lie awake, as I am a very light sleeper, you don't get the feeling of um, aggression and anger. And it's very nice to have your partner sleeping peacefully. I think the message is if someone is snoring, particularly if the partner is complaining about it, they should go and see their general practitioner. If the practitioner is convinced that there is really a problem there, the person should be referred to a sleep centre or a sleep physician uh, for further testing. The other advantage I find on it is that uh, now I can actually sleep on my back. Yeah. I couldn't before because I snored, now I don't. <laughs>